In this video, we're going to be covering the final hook that came with React 18, and this is the use ID hook. This is by far the simplest of the hooks that came with React 18, and if you want to learn about all the other React 18 hooks as well as all of the other hooks in React, you're going to want to check out my completely free React hooks course. It's linked in the description below. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, we're going to be talking all about the use ID hook. Now, to get started on the right-hand side of my page, you can see that we have two email fields and we have some random text in the middle of them. And if we look at our app.js, you can see we have exactly that. We have this email form at the top and the bottom of our page, and then we have this article in the middle. And the way I like to think about this example is imagine you have like a blog and you have like a newsletter sign up and this newsletter sign up is at the top of your page and at the bottom of the page and in the middle you have like a really lengthy article. For our example, the article is very short so we can see both the forms at the same time, but you get the kind of example here. Now our email form is super straightforward. We just have a label and an input and they have an ID linking them together. So you can see our input has the ID email while the HTML for for our label is also that email. So that links these elements together. So when I click on the label email, it actually focuses inside the email text box. But there's a bug with this implementation. Since I've hard coded this ID of email here, both of my email fields have the exact same ID. So when I click on the label for my bottom email field, it actually highlights the top email field. And that's because if I inspect my page real quick, go over to the elements tab, you can see that both of our labels have the same for attribute and both of our inputs have the same ID attribute. They're both set to this email. So that is obviously a problem because in HTML, you can only have one ID on the page. Each element must have its own ID. So there's already a problem here. And that's why when we click on the label down here, it actually focuses the top input instead of focusing the bottom input. Now, the way you would normally fix this with React would be like create a random ID. For example, I could just say const ID equals math.random. And now I could use that as my ID for each one of these. Let's just paste that in so we can see what this would look like. And now if I save, I click on email here, you can see it highlights this one. Click on email down here, it highlights that one. This will technically work for you, but it's a little bit cumbersome having to just use a random number like this, and it's not always ideal for all scenarios. And that's why React came up with its own way of doing unique IDs, and their unique IDs have some extra stuff sprinkled in that makes them really useful, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. And this is where the hook use ID comes in. So instead of just using a random number, we're going to type in use ID, and we're making sure we import that from React. And the use ID hook is as simple as it gets. It takes in no parameters at all. It's always going to be an empty function, and it just returns to you an ID. And this ID is going to be unique for each time you render the component. So now if I save my page and I click on this email input and this one, you can see they both correctly highlight. And if I inspect my page, you can actually see what these IDs look like. You can see at the top here, we have this ID like colon R1 colon, and down here we have colon R3 colon. So these are just automatically generated by React. If I refresh my page, you can see we get brand new IDs they are the exact same ones. And that's actually really important. You'll notice that while it gave us new random IDs, the random IDs were exactly the same. So the way this use ID hook works is that it actually will generate the exact same IDs every time, every time you render your page. So if your page renders exactly the same every time, it'll give you the same set of IDs. And this is really important when you're trying to do things with server side rendering and client side rendering. One of the biggest problems with doing IDs with the math.random way was if you server rendered some of your pages and then you client rendered some of your components, the IDs may mismatch between them if they're trying to point to the same element because when you run math.random on your server and you run math.random on your client, you're getting two different random numbers. While with this use ID hook, since it's always going to generate you the same IDs if everything is in the same order, it's going to make sure that on the server and on the client, your IDs are exactly the same. So they're able to match up with each other, which is really important. So if you're doing server side rendering and client side hydration, it's really important to use this use ID hook instead of using you know, the normal math.random or any other way to get a random number. Now, another thing you'll notice about these is we inspect again and just look here, these IDs start with a colon. And this is really important because in JavaScript, if you wanna use query selector, so for example, I was just like saying document.query selector, and I wanted to query selector for like that R1 element, this is actually going to throw an error. I'll show you in just a second here. If I just inspect my page, go over to the console, you can see we get an error it's saying failed to execute query selector on document. R1 with that colon in front is not a valid selector. So React is being really smart here and it's saying, you know what, I'm gonna generate IDs that are impossible to select using document.querySelector. And the reason they do this is because in React, you don't wanna use things like document query selector. Instead, you would wanna add a reference to your input. You could say like ref equals ref, and then up here you would just say use ref. 
and you would make sure that you have something like this. And that way you could actually reference that input if you needed to. So by making the IDs impossible to select with Query Selector, they're really forcing best practices on you, which in my opinion is a really good idea. Now, obviously, we're not going to be doing use ref in here, but if you want to learn more about use ref, make sure you check out that free course link in the description below. And the final thing I want to talk about is what happens if you have multiple inputs in your form. So for example, we have an email and let's add in a name here as well. So the type is going to be text here and we're just going to put in a line break right now. And you would think we would need to create two different IDs because right now they share the same ID. So we would do something like this. We would have an ID one and an ID two. And now if we save, you can see each one of these field inputs correctly links to the right label. And if we inspect our page, you can see they all have their own unique ID. If we go to our elements, you can see we got six, seven, R, A, R, B, and so on. Now this would seem like a good idea, but it's kind of extra overhead you don't need because you're running this use ID hook multiple times in the same component. And since you already know every time you run your component, use ID is gonna give you a unique ID, so your ID is unique to that component, you can just use one ID and just make a few changes to the ID. So here we would have our ID, and we can just add on like email to the end of it, for example. So we have some code that looks like this. There you go, and I'm just gonna copy this down as the ID here, here, and here, and I'm just gonna change email to name. So now we're using just one automatically generated ID, and we're just appending something onto the end of it. So we're saying, hey, this is for email, this one's for name, and so on. And this right here is really nice because you don't have to worry about the performance overhead of calling use ID multiple times. If you have 50 inputs, you only have to call use ID once, which just saves you a little bit on performance. And that's all there is to the use ID hook. It's really that simple. Now, if you want to dive into some of the more complex hooks in React, you're going to want to check out my completely free React hooks course. It's linked down in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.